Wow, Johnny, there sure are a lot of halo lights in your glasses. Oh, you know, I'm very halo-esque. It's almost like you're prepping for something, like you're trying to tell me you, you want to talk about something. You mean the best show I've seen so far? Yes, Fallout. Because <laughs> you and I are going to have Fallout for me missing that joke just now, that beautiful uh, setup. Hey man, Hashtag just meta. Let's just not showgun this, all right? <laughs> Gosh. Um, Johnny. What am I cosplaying as? Um, a sad guy in his 30s. Wow. You know what, Johnny? I'm going to give you $3 and three. Oh, hold on. Let me rephrase. <laughs> I'm going to give you $3 and you'll have a guess. Uh, you'll have three guesses. And if with each guess you get wrong, you lose oh, a dollar. Whoa, so. whoa, whoa. <laughs> Let's go the other way. This is a family-friendly show. Jason. Oh, I'm sorry. You lose a dollar for any guess you get wrong. So you just burned one of your dollars. So you have two okay, left. Rude. Um a nerd who's been sad and alone in his basement <laughs> gosh this isn't just beat up on me <laughs> punching back time <laughs> goodness uh, oh i mean these are all correct answers but it's not what i had in mind <laughs> uh, i guess i have one more um oh. cosplaying as an author finally finishing his book wow that was a good guess that's yeah. not it either dang it all right well i lost three bucks again yeah it's fine um I actually, Johnny, was cosplaying as myself my first year at Fanix. I don't know if this is the shirt I wore, but it's like me looking like. So, all right, quick anecdote. Johnny and I go to Fanix. We get in for free one year, right? Coleman hooks us up, master of whatever Coleman's the master of. Um, he hooks us up. And so I'm in I'm in Fanix for free. It's my first time in the convention center. And I had to come right from work. And so I'm wearing this like really like bank outfit. So for those who are just listening, I'm wearing a collared t-shirt, a button-up t-shirt. And I look very proper and I'm like taking photos with like all the cosplayers and stuff. Yeah. And I'm wearing like this, like slacks and buttoned up t-shirt. And I just look like such a goober. I'm like, I'm just hope people thought that I was like a businessman there or something like, like further come mention, you know, not oh. this random idiot who just finished his, you know, I'm, I, I work in a, I, I'm a teller. <laughs> so, yeah. oh, so that's what I'm cosplaying as Johnny though, just dropped a huge bomb on me. What? Yeah. Just just forcing me out into the open. Uh, so I finished my book officially. What? Yeah. Spoilers. Spoilers. Yeah. So I finished it. So every gram read it's done. The, the, I guess there's a few final things. So it needs to be narrated, which is a few month process just with getting in a queue. I don't know if you guys know, but I have a pretty famous narrator. Hashtag Nick Podell. What? So we're a few months out just because he's so popular and in such high demand. But uh, he has agreed to do it. And... That's kind of where we're at. So we're just waiting for that and formatting, but everything else is good to go. I'm excited to have him read it to me. Oh. <laughs> Gosh. I need to create a character named Johnny, but I haven't done it yet. <laughs> Maybe there's another cool name I could give him, Yeah, but like it's reference to you. I, I'm, uh, I'm offended that hasn't happened yet. Like no John. Okay. Since it's like re, I don't know. It was, it was like me trying to recreate your name. Like, N O Y J O N. Oh, okay. Sort of a Voldemort okay. thing going. Oh, ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> How about Gion? Then it's Fonse. Luz. Oh, I'm gonna call me. You're gonna give me a, a domain to be the master over that has more light than anything else. <laughs> I could. He he could just be Lux. Oh, Lux is kind of a cool name. Okay. Put a put a put an X on that. Yeah. I kind of like that. Maybe there'll be a character named Lux. But it's really pronounced lose. Actually, it's pronounced lose. <laughs> then spell it right. And we'll be like, ah. <laughs> it's mm. a fantasy world. We spell it how we want. <laughs> um, okay. I had one other anecdote to tell you, and now I can't remember it. But it was really important. Oh, it was. It was oh, I remember it now. Okay. It's really funny, Johnny. Um, so, <laughs> so for years, I've bragged to you. I have, I have a, a really nice card. Do you remember what it is? I've had it for like decades. I don't know if this sounds funny or not. Like yeah, a card, card? Like, like a playing card. No, I don't remember any of this. Okay, that's fine. So, Melissa, our, our mutual friend, she's an athlete. And ha okay, she Master anyway. Of she, strength, they know her. She's been on Master. Yeah, of strength. Master of Strength. Look up Melissa, Master, Master of Strength. She's the best. But she loves Yu-Gi-Oh. And I was bragging, like humble bragging, about how I had a first edition holographic dark magician. Hey man, it's it's all about the magic of the cards. You got to believe in the cards. Well. Johnny, it's fake. What? 
found out today that it's totally a fake. I've been bragging to like multiple multiple sources. Were you like, like complaining saying, that there was like a little tiny rip and it would have been worth tens of millions if it wasn't I, for this little? Bit? I was like, yeah, there's a tiny rip in the corner from one of me, either me or my siblings, like chewing on the corner a little bit. And if it wasn't for that, I was always saying that it would be worth thousands of dollars because because really first crazy. edition holographics from two thousand or from whatever two thousand and one no, go for that much. Early two thousands. Yeah. So oh, I, Luke. Oh, Luke. Oh. um, so it's a fake. I don't know where my parents got it. So my parents bought it for me when I was a little like eight year old, I think, or 10 year old. Um, so it would have been two th- somewhere between th- 2002 and 2005. And I found out years later, I, I posted on Reddit. I'm like, can how anyone help me identify these cards? I'm just curious. <laughs> like, within like five minutes, two people commented and they're like, anytime you see this pattern and this pattern, it's a fake. And I'm like, oh. Wait, did you Google it or just make sure they're not lying to you? Because well, I've, I've, you. well, no, I've, I've tried finding it for years on Google and I can never find it, and it always like made me curious, like why can't I find it? And come on, Johnny, this is a Reddit forum that was dedicated to Yu-Gi-Oh, and there were two people verifying it. You really think that they, they don't know what they're talking about? I feel like nerds just want to mess with you. Maybe, maybe more people will comment and rescue me. Maybe they just say that to everyone. Like it's a bot I that mean, just says those are fake. It wasn't uh, likes to mess with Jay, right? Wasn't that username? <laughs> no, it was Deadlight Nerds. I did it on our profile. <laughs> I may or may not have, uh, you know, messed with you a few times on Reddit. So, oh, yeah, right. <laughs> anyway, I thought that was so funny <clears throat> that I've been bragging for years about this, and it's totally fake. You should just <laughs> walk around with it on Fanex this year and try to sell it. See if anyone will. I should. I should put it in a necklace at this point because who cares? Yeah, and then have like people be like, "Oh man, I'd, I'd give you like so much for this," and then for them being so nice, we'll give them swag. <laughs> I feel like Joe Dirt when like he's all excited because he found a meteor, oh. and then later <laughs> <laughs> just finds you out it's fries a... off that. You ate off that thing. <laughs> Gosh, uh... oh, that's no atomic bomb. That's just an old pooper tank. <laughs> just like, Dirty yeah, Joe Dirt man. This is uh this is why you buy things verified years later, not you know trust whatever your parents gave you. No, I no, guess. That's real. Yeah, it's real. <laughs> I I just so badly want to know where they got it from. Like, did they get it from like a sketchy trading card shop where the guy was just like getting shipments directly from China? Like, what was going on? You know. <laughs> anyway, I this that bookcase behind you, Jay, is is also fake. I'm sorry, there's no <laughs> book there. <laughs> it's almost like you can see through the books. <laughs> Oh, next time, this is another fun thing. We're actually switching up my house. So next time I'll be in an actual studio. We're building a studio for... What? Because I no longer work from home. So I used to have an office. And now, since I don't work from home anymore, uh, we're switching it up to be a kind of like yours where it's a nerd wall. We're going to do the same thing. Uh, I basically just want to be you, Johnny. Um, no one's ever said that in the history of the world. So. Well, I just did. I want to be like Lux. Oh, so do I. Sounds amazing. Write him up to be very muscular. And, uh, do you actually like that name? It's kind of cool because it's like you combined with Lex Luthor and it's Lux. I mean, I, any any dedication to me, I'll take credit for it. Okay. I like it. It'll be you in the book and he's going to be joyful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Johnny, I'm in a great mood in case you can't tell. <laughs> I'm so happy to see you. Last time Johnny and I did a cast and the audio was totally corrupted. Like we kept talking over each other and it recorded it weird and like it was all razzle dazzle. It was very so. much year one of us doing this. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Um, we were very Cain and Abel at the time. Yeah. Who can talk the loudest and fastest? <laughs> and Johnny was trying to hit me with a rock and it was a whole ordeal. Thankfully, well, I escaped. You know- I'm glad you were able to avoid my cane. Uh-huh. Mm, wow, that was good. Repertoire. Very good, Johnny. Well, what are we talking about today outside so, of so my triumphs and failures? Though, Jay, I think this is like the first year that I can remember. Maybe it happened a couple of years too, but there's only one big blockbuster for the summer that's coming out. Normally there's always big blockbuster movies, right? So nights, we for, for now that it's summer, you guys have a little bit more time. We want to talk about three TV shows that have dropped. Um, that you can watch all of them. So we want to go over our favorite shows. Okay. Yeah, real quick. They're new ones, brand new ones. Does it is it concerning to you at all that only Dune Two has done well at the box office? Nothing else has come out. I mean, the only one that people are like, "Yeah, it's going to be so good." Deadpool and Wolverine. I'm like, of course, there's nothing else that's going to come out. But there have it. been movies that have flopped. The Gentleman of Ungentlemanly Warfare, or whatever. The League of Ungentlemanly Warfare. That one flopped. Uh, the Hitman one, not Hitman. Uh, Oh, him the stuntman, on yeah. Sorry, 
there you go. But Stuntman flopped with uh, really everyone I've been talking to liked it. Oh, that's what everything everyone liked it. But in terms of box office, it was a flop. Oh, and then there was a big flop. Uh, Garfield flopped. The uh, come on, what was the one? It's uh, Mad Max, the Mad, the new Furiosa. Oh, really? People have been praising that one too. Hard flop, bro. They're not going to make their money back. Jeez. And that those were all supposed to be pretty big blockbusters. Mad Max in particular was supposed to be huge. Why do people aren't going to movies then because everyone I talk to has been loving all those. Even Dune Two, like we thought for sure it'd break a billion, seven hundred seventy-seven million. Is that why really we're streaming so fast? Yeah, that probably doesn't help. I mean, I saw it with Brandon Sanderson, so it was great no matter what. Okay. But I, brag, brag. <laughs> As he's up at the top, and I'm like trying to get him to like sit next hey, to yeah. me. You want to come down? Open spot. <laughs> he's avoiding me. <laughs> and as it should be, though. Those are who we get avoided for, not like cosplay girls. We get avoided by grown men who write fantasy novels. <laughs> it was yes, exactly. <laughs> Johnny, it was one of those moments where everyone was enjoying the film. You know, on uh, the boys when Homelander is just watching like the game and everyone's watching it too. Oh yeah. <laughs> and then in the crowd, he sees that was me watching Brandon while the movie's going. <laughs> Uh, all right all right so i just wanted your quick input do you do is this the year of the death of the movie or are we okay like will big blockbusters still come out loop. i mean we've had what 12 years of marvel coming out with their big stuff over the, the over the blockbuster right summer events i think it's just just how it goes i'm sure there has been summers where there was nothing i think it's a recalibration too we need the next trend yeah yeah they're just trying to sort out what they want like before um superheroes it was mummies right not mummies sorry uh zombies right that was a big deal mummies <laughs> mummies would be good mummies too, are a zombie technically yeah, true. i i would classify that as okay, like good. I'm, I'm only half mistaken i'll take it uh, <laughs> i think they'll be okay i mean there's a lot of stuff out in the works uh star wars might come again in three more years right when is that gonna happen uh well they're gonna make the mando avenger movie that's gonna be big i'm real nervous about it yeah. the uh, acolyte is getting terrible reviews and part of it i think is getting review bombed by haters but it still isn't getting good reviews well nothing's gonna uh, beat mando season one and two yeah it's true but, okay oh night something did happen can we start with halo because that's a good trend yeah halo um uh, based off the video game that me and jay played many hours in a basement uh came out i think two years ago maybe three and the season two finally dropped and for me, it was one of the first times where they listened to the fans and they recalibrated it and made it a better season two than the first season. Without my understanding. So Johnny and I do this fun thing where like we each have certain streaming sites. So Johnny watches Halo. I watch Shogun. It's kind of one of those things. Anyway, um, I'm going to question you about it. Does it feel like they were pandering or does it feel like they recalibrated? Because I would say The Rise of Skywalker was written by Reddit. Would you say that Halo was written by Reddit? No, 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 no. I feel like they took the right opinions and recalibrated it because there were still people complaining that Master Chief, uh, spoiler alert for everyone here in just a little bit, uh, he didn't have his helmet on at all times. But it made it feel more like a um, Battlestar Galactica, like a, a space novella, more of a, a, a TV show out in space than it did a video game. So that's what I like. They made a, the world bigger and they humanized him by not having him have the helmet on the whole time. And they fixed I, it to where it was more centered around Master Chief and not like the world building, which they had to do in season one. You have to build the world sometime. I kind of like that, honestly, because you don't really learn much. Like you learn a little bit about Master Chief, but it's more just about, you know, curb stomping grunts. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. If you play the game and you play all of the... Um, campaigns right because we we like the multiplayer version of the game but you realize that they're like taking young kids and they bring them up and they put stuff in them to make them all into spartans right they they're not just they're enhanced humans yeah they're legit uh, don't they do it on like a moon world too like it doesn't happen on earth yeah yeah there's a different planet they run around to um uh, what was super cool though is i'll tell everyone to watch you can even google this if you're skeptical about season two about six minutes in and there's a big spoiler, but I already ruined this to Jay a long time ago. Uh, Master Chief is just fighting, and they don't realize that the aliens are there. And then all of a sudden, there's a, cl a dust cloud. You can't see anything. Then out of nowhere, you see about 15 just those swords just light up. And the energy just, sword? Even through, yeah, even through, kind of like how the Mandalorian, he can do a lot with his helmet on, right? Like, you can tell that he's 
in the face version, you could tell Master Chief was like, oh, <laughs> I'm in trouble. Johnny, I just got chills at that description. It's a cool one. I, I, I pushed it a little, but I well, tell everyone to watch it. It goes, <clears throat> oh, ah, golden. Mm. What's more iconic? Ah, oh, that's an unfair question. I was going to say what's more iconic, a lightsaber or an energy sword, but. Well, Saber is going to win. Yeah. Um, but, but it's but not that far the off. game, though, yeah. I remember what, Halo 2, everyone fought for that dang sword. And it's just a sword. You have to be up close. But it was still the coolest thing to ever drop in a video game that I can remember. People going nuts over, right? Do you remember anything in like that, like weapon wise? I was like, oh, now that's cool. Yeah, I remember all the memes about like the first time you see the elite run in with it and you're like, oh no, <laughs> they're coming in through the back door. <laughs> and somehow you sound like Lex Luthor. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Batman. <laughs> okay. Um, so what would you rate the season on a scale of one to 10? So two, I give it a good eight, which is hard to do. Uh, they didn't have a lot of filler episodes, which is nice. Cause it is about eight long, uh, eight episodes long. And some go the full hour. Some go like 43 minutes. Uh, but they did do a lot more concise world building and humanizing them. So I, I liked, I, I gave it a good eight. Which is big for a TV show that had the second season. Yeah, an eight, any basically anything above a seven means you're you're rewatching it and you're rewatching clips pretty frequently, right? Like an eight means you'll be revisiting this in a year, probably. Oh, yeah, you'll yeah, yeah. you'll rewatch like, the season to watch season three. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's a lot that I missed in it. Obviously, we all miss things, or a lot of good sh- surprises in and out on the show. And and there's good battles that didn't go on for too long. But enough to make it for the like, there's not like, okay, cool. That was an eight minute battle that they didn't need to have to do. Right. Uh, it was a good time of, of watching them fight and then getting kind of his butt kicked a little bit. He did fight. And again, this is all spoiler heavy. He fought an elite, which is a big, hefty alien without his suit on. Master Chief did. He just, yeah, they just went hand to hand. It was really cool. Like I'm telling you, it, it's, it, it reminded me a lot of the first scene of Battlestar Galactica where you're out in space and there's some drama to it. But not like, oh, you know, my baby's made by Master Chief. Well, it's not that kind of drama. It's real life drama. So let me ask you a question. You said they recalibrated. What are some things they did wrong in the first season that they did right in the second? Yeah, the the season one, they had issues with um, three episodes where it had nothing to do with Master Chief or at all. Like they just <laughs> had some other planet and showed people living there which is cool but that could have been 30 minutes on one episode you didn't need that for three they saw boba fett and they were like that's what we want to do <laughs> yeah kind of like that and this is kind of like wh- why are we why are we spending three episodes out of eight <laughs> on this one uh, protagonist that has nothing to do with it right now she ties in a little bit more towards the end of one and a little bit more on two but there was just a lot of nothing and then it took too long to bring in uh, what we wanted to see, which was battling, right? It was towards the second to last episode, I think, is where they went on the ground and they started fighting people, uh, fighting other aliens. So the, but we were like, this could have been earlier on the show, right? Kind of like Smallville. The issue was we know Superman can fly, but he doesn't fly till the very last episode, 11 years later. It's kind of like, we have to wait all that. So that's <laughs> what I thought was really about recalibrating. I like that. It's interesting to me that we, over the years, like Peter Jackson had like a 15 minute promo years and years and years, right after he did Lord of the Rings, he was making a Halo movie that they pulled the Paramount or whoever owned it at the time, pulled the plug on it. Does this sound familiar? Mm -hmm. Did you ever watch it? Well, I didn't see the 15 minutes, but I saw that he tried to put little things in every movie. (laughs) Like they had, they had, um, it was district nine. They had the master chief sniper. Yes. And the other one he did too. They put in the, um, Oh, what's that big robot that you sit in and you move around? Titan. <laughs> anyway, oh. they, they had one of the. They had one of the the. Oh, the exoskeleton, the exosuits. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. But I like the big one where you're like, it's like the whole thing. So he tried to sneak it in quietly. Mm, I like that. Okay, uh, last couple questions. What? So your favorite scene would have been the sandstorm scene, for that sure. That was really cool. It was only like thirty seconds long, and my favorite fight scene was. Master Chief just going hand to hand without his suit. That's legit. Yeah, because those guys are hefty and they have suits. And he just went and started taking them out. What do you say to purists who say things like, oh, you know, like you need to stay true to the source material? Because I'm that way sometimes. Like Wheel of Time, I I had a really hard time with because it was so different from the books that 
I, I just thought I'd rather just reread the books than watch this, if that makes sense. What are, what are, you know, to be, to horrible people like me who are sticks in the mud and wet blankets, what, what are your thoughts on like people who are real purists? I get it. A lot were complaining that he took off his helmet, right? That he didn't have it on a lot. And I said, just enjoy that we don't have any space shows at all. I mean, we have, we have Picard, which is really cool. And there's one or two, uh, Star but, Trek ones out there, but they've been around for a while. Like everyone knows the, the concept of Star Trek. So and the Orville who, is basically Star Trek too, right? Yeah, it's just and, another season. Just another season. And and people who I've talked to people who have never played the video game but really enjoyed the show. So that 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 tells you it's something good. Yeah, that's I think the biggest indicator. Speaking of which, there's an. It's amazing how video game adaptations are becoming good. You know what I mean? Oh, like how Skyrim and they made Game of Thrones. <laughs> No, there's not nearly that much nudity or incest in Skyrim. <laughs> Definitely that much violence, though. Uh, but but they did make a Bethesda <laughs> video game into a TV show. Hold on. I got to tell a quick Skyrim story. Um, super big tangent for our friend Chris Ford, who's the master of metal. Um, I come over. So this was I, I was over at his house. This was when I was like, I was still into Skyrim, but I hadn't put in like 400 hours yet. You know what I mean? Or 400 Weak. days, whatever it adds. Whatever it is I'm at. Something like that. I'm days into it, guys. It's Days? It's, You're not weeks? weeks. <laughs> months. <laughs> it It's probably coming up on a month. Anyway, um, so we Chris is just kind of showing me some stuff. And he goes into his house. And there's an assassin. It's in solitude. And there's like an assassin in his house. <laughs> and like the assassin screams something, comes running at Chris's character. And Chris's character like does one attack. And it instantly jumps to a cutscene where he just decapitates them. But it was the strangest thing because afterwards Chris was like, "What?" <laughs> he was so confused. He was like, "That was so scary and weird." <laughs> like we were just chilling, having a good time. Like he was just showing me his house, and some guys in there and comes screaming at him and gets decapitated. It's like just the most like you know like the most jarring pivot in the history of the world. It's like yeah, this high level Skyrim guy who's just you know showing his friend all this fun stuff has some assassin dude in his house that just screams and attacks him. Anyway. It was just funny to watch Chris's face for the next like 30 seconds trying to like, did that just happen? <laughs> Am I in the wrong house? Oh, that was awesome. Anyway, okay. We were talking about Fallout. That had nothing to do with Fallout. Oh, I was trying to pivot. I didn't know you had a whole Skyrim story. I always wait for Skyrim stories. I never seen a good Skyrim story. Okay, good. Had you heard that one before? No, I don't remember that one at all. Mm, I, I have I a few more I'll tell you. you how when I had the, the hearth fire that was called yeah the that dlc and you build your home and then you can have a spouse go there and then they kidnap her and i'm like that was the dumbest thing they've ever done and then you go <laughs> find where they're at and you just destroy them all johnny's put it on his boxing gloves and just oh yeah <laughs> like going over kill them well because the funny thing about skyrim and this is the old technology it doesn't really level up at the same time so like if you're level 10 and then you fight level 10 but then uh, an enemy but then you go back to that same bandit area and you're level 40. Those they're still over 10, <laughs> which means it's an insta kill. I mean, maybe they jumped up to like 15 sometimes, right? It's, yeah, it's not. It's it, in the same area, right? They it doesn't grow, scale. You go further along. Yeah, they don't scale at all. And that's old. What? 13 years ago now, Skyrim. I should say it doesn't scale properly. I've, I've, I've watched a whole video on it and like, yeah, they'll, they'll increase with you, but not that much. Yeah. And so it's, it's changed on the new stuff. The the horrible star filled game, but released. Uh, where if you are a higher level and you see someone and you find a, a random encampment of of outlaws and you go against them they're usually too below you or above you so it's not too which i don't really like because i always liked in skyrim that it felt like i was actually conquering the world and like i could go back to like the first guy that <laughs> bugged me and just like show up in full daedric armor like and just <laughs> yeah uh, yeah with with a war hammer and just start launching people <laughs> Yeah, that's amazing, Johnny. Was it Serana? Did you do the DLC where you're married Serana? So you couldn't marry her on the DLC. It had to be um it oh, was, mod. Uh, yeah, it was yeah, it was um um you have to get the you had to modify it. Yeah. I know I've never been friend zoned so hard as Serana. What's up with that? I'm I'm shocked they made this awesome vampire character and you're like, nerds, you can't marry her. All right, cool. <laughs> the outrage, Johnny. I know. <laughs> nerds. Nerds, I know what you like. You can't have her. Right? <laughs> Guess I'll go back to my sad life. Mm. 
Uh, okay. Well, let's talk let's, now that we're fully through that's Skyrim. That's true, though, right? They, they, they made the Skyrim TV show called Game of Thrones. Eh, I'm pretty sure Game of Thrones precedes Skyrim, actually. Uh, no, that's just a running joke I have with a friend when they're like, are they going to make a Skyrim game? We're like, Game of Thrones? I mean, it's, 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 it's all medieval. No, but they did do a... Fallout. Fallout. I liked Fallout the game. Did you like the game? Let's go from there. I haven't played New Vegas. Don't hate me. I've only played Fallout 4. No, I, I'm in the same boat. I've, I've okay. just recently played New Vegas. <sighs> okay. Like, like barely. And it was the, the problem is to play a game with that old of a graphic, it's hard. You got to get back into it. Yeah, it's hard to do it. Um, but no, my first, I'm with you, my because I worshiped Skyrim. And the next best thing we had to hold us over was Fallout 4, which I really did like. I, I liked it, it a lot. Great. Yeah. For for what, P, I, I guess if you played like, three or las vegas and then you went to four i can understand if you don't like it uh but for me first experience four was amazing yeah i really liked fallout four i would give the video game like an eight out of ten which is pretty uh, high pretty high for game yeah skyrim's a 10 red dead or like there's only three tens that i've ever played in my life mm. yeah there's only like three tens i think you're not a call of duty fan huh i like call of duty i there they would be eights you know, the, especially modern. Well, actually, modern warfare and uh, modern warfare two would probably be uh, nines. Yeah. I like those. Those are good ones. I even liked World at War. Okay, but that's not important. But those are games that we like. Yeah, I, I Skyrim is interesting because it's like taking a Call of Duty, combining it with like a dystopian world, and combining it with like the Skyrim play playthrough. Like it was weird to have Skyrim, but have it be a shooter. That was unusual to me. That was a hard transition in fallout like oh, since yeah, 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 yeah. since the character like the way you play is very the mechanics are very similar but you have guns it's kind of weird no i get it um but the and but they they opened it up even more where they the people liked on skyrim where you rebuild make it your own they've had that even more enhanced with the engine on uh fallout 4 but anyways yeah. so huge success so why not make a show about it right dude and they, they all the games have been successful i think there's like I think there's six or seven Fallout games. Um, I could be wrong. It could only be five. But the show ties it is canon. So the, the creators have come out and said that they're okay with the show. Like they approved of it and it's canon. Yeah. And it's not like Vegas or four. It's a, it's just like its own thing, but and in it's the same world. Good. And it really fleshes out the world extremely well. Like, especially, so as someone who's played the game, there's so much nuance to the story that I never got from the games that I get from the story. Yeah, because on Fallout 4, so talk about the show, right? Spoilers, yes. guys. Um, someone who's in a vault in the TV show uh, leaves a vault, the vault that they're in, and they are experience the world outside of it, the world that had fallen out with the nuclear war. And on Fallout 4, the video game, that's the experience we have, is we're awakened from uh, being put under, and then we experience the world. So it's a lot different because they, we don't really interact with the vault people in the game. So to see someone who like lived a clean life, clean water, didn't have to fight for everything. And then all of a sudden be thrown out on a society where they're just like, Hey, dog eat dog. Good luck. Don't trust anybody. Yeah. She was born in a vault. Whereas our character like saw the A-bombs go off and was put into Cairo sleep. So in the video game, you see the A-bomb go off, you're put into Cairo sleep and then you're woken back up and leave. Whereas in, um, in the show, she's lived her whole life in the vault. And chooses to leave, even though it's fully functioning, has had clean water, like you said, has tasted oysters, yeah, Nuka Cola, and it's safe. Um, it's safe in all accounts. It's safe. Yeah, for the most part. Yeah. There's there's an inciting event that wasn't so safe, but outside of that, I yeah, I it's safer than the real world. They don't know what's going on because they don't know what's going on out there. They really don't. Yeah, the world world is terrifying. Johnny, have you finished the show? No, I saw two more, maybe, maybe three. Okay, I won't. I won't go into total spoilers. You can go as details you want. It's gonna take me a millennia to finish it. No, I won't do it. Not gonna do it because I really enjoyed the last two episodes, and I'd like for you to see them. But you, you know enough to where we can talk about it. So, like, yeah. some of my favorite things. Is it okay if we GBN it a little bit since GBN you've seen it. most of it? We haven't GBN the other one. That's fine. You, you did such a detailed, thorough writing analysis that I need the structure, though. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay no more funny laughs Ooh, okay officially no more <laughs> okay uh good so a good for me uh would definitely be the acting was so good um we're not quite getting into nerdy territory but i thought 
this is what I wanted from the new Star Wars film. Like, this is how I wanted Ray and Finn to act with each other and interact and their dialogue to be. That was what I wanted in Star Wars was what we got in Fallout, where you have the main character and the main Brotherhood character, uh, not Titus. I don't remember his name. Ma- Ma- Matthias? I can't remember. Um, anyway, um, it's not, also not Thaddeus. I can, I can think of everyone but him. Um, anyway, the two main characters I loved and I adored, and I thought they had such good chemistry and Maximus. I wanted, thank you, Maximus. Yeah. Um, they had such good chemistry and they were so fun to watch together. And there was like nuance and, and great dialogue. And we didn't get that with star Wars. Like there was some okay things, but really I was so disappointed with Ray and uh, Finn. Like it was, it was extremely disappointing to me actually. And this just highlighted that because they kind of look like the other actors. Um, so a good for me was just the dialogue and acting was really well done. Yeah, I was going to say that the actors are a really good choice. All of them. All of them are good. And they, the good was it, it didn't take you out of the world. Kept you good on the inside of it. Um, I was able to follow it really well. That's what I liked. Um, coming into the video game, what could have been bad is I was expecting it to be like the game. But if I knew going in, it's like it's it's a different version of it. It was a lot easier to, to not freak out. So is that your bad then? No, no, no. My bad will, will come. Okay. Well, I I only really had the one good uh, because I have a lot of nerdy. I don't know if I don't know if I've told you this, Johnny, but this is probably my favorite live action show of all time. Over over um, One Piece. Dude, One Piece was so good and the best cast I've ever seen. All right, I I, I'm gonna. You haven't really watched One Piece, the cartoon. We're gonna have to come back to that, Johnny, because I really love One Piece and I'm rewatching it right now. Yeah, but you haven't seen any of the any of the cartoons. But like that, that shouldn't be like like if someone hasn't seen but if I haven't played the action, video games. Though, that's why I Johnny, mean, there's like ten thousand episodes of the anime. I'm not watching a single you gotta one. Watch is like ten, and then you'll get like the first <laughs> season. <laughs> there's this thing called fast pace where you can finish it in like an hour. Don't ask me how it's done <laughs> or where to watch it. <laughs> Johnny, if you send me a submersive list of like a hundred episodes, just a, no, not even that. I want like twenty episodes <laughs> where I get the whole story in twenty episodes. If you can send me well, that list, the nice thing about Fast Pace, wow, this is tangent city, uh, is it cuts out the intro and 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 the follow up, so it's only an eight minute episode because anime is only really eight minutes long. <laughs> okay, yeah, and then it zooms through it, so it zooms through arcs. I would be okay one, with that. Very arc heavy. Okay, but back to Fallout. Um, <laughs> What was your bad then? Um, they burn dogs at one point, I guess. That would be my only bad. <clears throat> they There's a scene that's really... I just don't like when... I, and I'm not even a big animal lover, but dogs in particular, I have a hard time. Like, I am legend. I, ever since I am legend, I've had a hard time with dogs dying on screen. And there's a scene where, like, dogs aren't a certain weight, so they just get killed. And I'm like, mm. it's very subtle. But that would probably be my bad. You and dystopians. That's how that's how it is. You gotta deal with it. Deal with yeah, it. but I don't want to know about it. No. Uh it's not even bad. It was just kind of cringy a little bit with um Game of Thrones, how they had the siblings hooking up. They went a little bit too much on that they dated cousins on there. Like right off the bat, the main character is getting wed to another vault. And that's like the thing. And her cousin's like, I'm in love with you. And he's like, and she goes, well, we were cousins. It was fine when we were younger, but not fine now. But they <laughs> brought it up like three more times. And I'm like, once is oh, enough. Cause cousins. it makes sense. Like they're in a, you know, they're in a small community, you know, it's fine, but they just kept bringing it up. I'm going to agree with you on this. I couldn't, I, my bad was not, I'm really glad you're saying this. Even so like her cousin later is hooking up with someone else. And I was like, that feels like incest. Like that just feels wrong. But the thing is like, yeah. And they didn't have to over, like it went two episodes when they kept going like, oh, but we're cousins. It was all right. But I'm like, you said it one, just one time. And then (laughs) it builds it and then keep going. But they just kept bringing it up. And I go, oh my gosh. Remember how we were were cousins and I'm still in love with you. And I'm like, okay, we get it. Go move on. (laughs) (laughs) I'm in love with my cousin. Yeah. They they, they did come up. (laughs) It's like uh, all the failed bursts in house of the dragon. Like, can we just like minimize these guys? Like, (laughs) it's like really starting to hurt. Kind of like, you know, I know back in medieval times, like royalty married other royalty that were like first cousins. Fine. But they don't need to keep bringing it up. 
in a show. <laughs> that was all. They could have just said it once, like, oh, well, I love you, and we dated, and we were cousins. Yeah, cool. And then just moved on. I don't know. Just, yeah, it's not, true. You don't need a whole <laughs> third episode explaining that he loves his cousin. It wasn't that important to us, and the fact that they kept bringing it up was like, mm. Yeah, it's not that <laughs> big at all. So that was my bad, because it just t- it took me, if I remembered it, it took me out of it. I, I would say my bad with that was kind of the same thing. Like in the vaults, they're a little bit freaky. Like, like she's, so he, he's got a pregnant friend and the spouse dies. And then she's like hooking up with this other friend. And it's like, that just feels like a little rushed and wrong to me. So like, yeah, they don't got, they don't have uh, streaming sites where you know, they can just watch horrible movies like the Hitman. So yeah, I guess so. Okay. Um, should we move on to nerdy? Do you have another bag? Nerdy. Dude, that whole show's nerdy. What are you talking about? Yeah, so my favorite line of the whole show, and it summed up so well, just video games in general, the ghoul, who's who's also going to be one of my nerdies. I'm Dude, guessing you're going to pick him too. So nerdy. Oh. Oh. Okay, but this is the quote from him. He says, thou shalt get sidetracked by bullshit every gosh damn time. <laughs> are you talking about how we never finish the main quest and only do the side quests? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly so i i love that line because it just it fits like i laughed out loud when he said it because it was such a good way of being meta without like he says it's like the first rule of of fallout or whatever and i'm like that's just they know what they're doing the, the balance of being meta while also like not you know actually winking at the audience and being like oh, oh is so hard to run you know what i mean it's yeah, it's such a in that fourth wall yes exactly like without actually acknowledging the audience it's so hard to do it and he did it It was the perfect line so it i i loved it it was awesome i didn't even notice it that's i'm glad you popped it out yeah i'll uh i'll send it to you so tell me about the ghoul johnny because i know that was going to be your nerdy no my nerdy is it was the actor in it i just freaking love anything walton good goddings what is it goggins goggins oh he's just so menacing but yet like you feel for him they made a good way of because he was pretty cool before it happened, obviously, um, that you felt bad for him. That he's kind of a douche, but it works. So I'm like, that's why it was the right. They they did it. I get why you're saying this is live actionly one of the best ever made. Because yeah. you feel for the character yet hate him at the same time. He yeah, he's so relatable as a as a. I don't even know want to call him a villain. I just want to call him an antagonist because he's not yeah, quite he's more, a villain. Is it, um, selfish, chaotic, selfish. I don't even know where to neutral where it's he's just surviving yeah you understand him so well and he's so good in the beginning and then you you totally relate with where he ends up um one thing about walton goggins i like about this show is i feel like it's the first time he's hit a list or status like he's been in a lot of things he's been in marvel movies he's been in uh quentin tarantino films but he's never like like head listed as like the big actor and in this one he was he was the most well-known actor and he was in all like he was on Jay Leno or I guess Jay Leno's retired. He was on Co- whatever the show is right now. Jimmy Kimmel <laughs> he just said all horrible people. <laughs> I just said all the like anymore. he was on like all the late night shows. I was trying right. to think of late night shows. Yeah. <laughs> he was getting interviewed. He was on Ellen's show. <laughs> <laughs> all the ones that have stopped. All the ones that don't that don't do interviews anymore. <laughs> David Letterman. <laughs> Gosh, oh, am I showing my age, Johnny? Am I carbon yeah. dating myself? I love it. He was on. I love I- it because I got everything reference he made, so I love it. <laughs> Anyway, he was being interviewed a lot, I guess is what I'll say. And it was, he was trending like, yeah, he was trending like crazy. He was, he's finally made it is kind of the feeling I got. Like he, he was a a movie star for sure, but like he was officially like an A-list movie star, which was cool. It was cool because they had on one of my favorite of all time, uh, Kyle McLaren. I can never say his name, but he was the mayor on Portlandia. The, the, um, was Was he the knight? No, 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 no. The, the, the dad who got kidnapped oh yes yeah he's he was on twin um peaks right he's been around forever forever, and he's amazing like i just he he can be friendly and creepy at the same time he is Uh, so good dude he's in a really old show that i love i'm gonna look it up real quick no one pay attention okay yeah well he was also um in that but but that's what i'm saying like they had really good people that weren't in there a lot but enough to make you want to watch more of it uh so that's what I nerdy too. And I was super shocked about who Lucy was <laughs> something about it just dyed your hair. And I forgot she was in, um, uh, is it kick, kick, not kick ass. Was it kick ass? Where was she on? Yeah, I don't kick know. Ass. She was on the kick ass movies. So was she? Yeah. It's just cause she had blonde hair. So <laughs> dye huh. your hair and we forget everything about you. 
like the main she's character not the main, yeah she's not oh. she's not kick ass she's okay uh, was on it got it got she's it okay been on, like a lot of movies and shows that you were like oh i recognize her yes uh, okay i'm with you 100 percent. well yeah because she's usually a blonde in all her shows right you know like, it's crazy she was, johnny she was maleficent uh the younger version of her on maleficent oh Anyways, yeah but, you know what's truly crazy though is you were in the show which one in fallout you were in it oh who was i you were the robot I'm merely going to harvest your <laughs> organs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but every month, my darling. <laughs> uh, oh, why do we love There's him? somebody at the door. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, yes, I will do anything for you. That was the most genuine laugh I've gotten out of you, Johnny, in a long time. Because uh, you forgot I, Matt Berry was in it, didn't you? Yeah, I always forget. Well, he, his cameo voices are the best because he's one of those recognizable voices for us. It's like, <laughs> If there's someone that we could play D and D with just for the voice, it would be him. Yes, one hundred percent. I don't care. I'll roll another twenty. Just something. <laughs> I will seduce the barmaid. <laughs> Come here, barmaid. Oh, she must <laughs> like boys, and then her <laughs> she's she doesn't like boys. <laughs> just... Or walk away. Like you know what I mean? Like he'll do wrong and just leave. I remembered it. I looked okay. it up. So her dad is Paul Atreides in the old like. David Lynch film from the 1980s Dune. Oh yeah, he's he Paul. Yeah, dude, I'm telling you, he's been around forever. It blew my mind when I saw that. Yeah, I am. Um, I've been a big fan of his for a long time. Anything he does, just love it. I like yeah. that. Switching back to Matthew Berry, I like that. Like it wasn't. It was a, a wonderful cameo that wasn't like they didn't point at it. You know what I mean? Like he was. Just, he just was there. Like even though he's a really famous actor and everything, it didn't feel like they were um trying to you know sometimes like it's a ham-handed cameo and it just like doesn't really fit it felt like it fit like no, he felt cool, like he he had a cool voice he was a robot and they made it go yeah i really enjoyed it uh did you know he makes a live action cameo you may not have gotten to that part oh, yet he does really very briefly he just talks about recording his lines oh it's pretty funny oh. it's it he is so funny because he always plays the same character where he's like <laughs> the this same character wannabe on, womanizer. <laughs> yeah, even on um the new uh, cartoon that Dan Harmon made, the Crapopolis, which is pretty crappy. Uh, it's with um the other guy from Moss from IT Crowd is the main thing. Anyway, he's the same thing. He's just a womanizer who is the uh, but he has a wife, but he just always goes. He always sounds the same. He's just a pervert. And I love it. <laughs> well, it works in what we do in the shadows it's because a little perv. he's actually completed the mission. Like he's got an amazing lady wife in Nadja. And that's why I like it. Yeah. And he's okay, my darling. <laughs> and this one, he's not, he, there's no Nadja, unfortunately. Yeah, well, he's a robot. So he just loves everybody. Or everybody. <laughs> I love his robot voice. Um, may I be of assistance? <laughs> There's no fudge here. <laughs> okay, enough of us imitating Matthew Berry because it's clear that we've been practicing. That You know that trending meme where it's like the, the girl's crying in the mirror and her husband's practicing voices in the background? That's me and you with Matthew Berry. <laughs> and it would be people crying because it's like enough, <laughs> enough's enough. Please not stop. My darling. <laughs> What's your next nerdy? Um, honestly, you know what I really, really, they captured the game. They captured the show so well that I wanted to play the game. And that's how I knew it was nerdy. I ran to go refire up something. I own way too much uh, consoles and haven't fired it up since November. I know nerds. We uh, we go through phases in life, but um, that made me want to turn on the game because I thought the good thing about these smaller, um, I mean they're big streaming sites, but they don't they're not like Netflix, which launches a new show every week. They can put their budget towards a bigger thing. So the budget was so well done that I wanted to play the game. Yes, it, it was very immersive. Immersive, thank you. That's what I was trying to say. Yep, it made me want to be like, you know what? I got to get my character out now and play a little bit more. <laughs> I 100% agree. It pulled me in so hard. I will say this too. In terms of immersion, I liked that you never felt safe. So let me give you an example. Typically in a show, main characters kind of have plot armor, right? Where they're not going to get attacked. And episode two, the ghoul is like, F that. This doctor guy that we've been following, he's getting shot in the leg. <laughs> And he gets his like blown clean off. And it surprised me so much because I just thought plot armor, these guys aren't gonna get hurt, right? No, that no, we're we're he gets his leg blown off. And then at the end of the episode, he gets his head chopped off. It's like 
how how amazing is that at, at immersion? Like the subversion of expectations was so well done. That's my nerdy is immersion for you and subversion of expectations for me. Yeah, even Family Guy they made fun of. Uh, I always whenever it's uh, May Fourth, I like to watch the Star Wars movies and the parodies on Family Guy. And Family Guy has a thing where they're all in the Millennium Falcon, and they're like. We're not going to die. Three of the four main cast members are in this <laughs> aircraft, so we're safe. <laughs> so I go, that's true. So a lot of times you're like, yeah, they're not going to kill off the main person right now. And then they do. Why Game of Thrones works so well? You're like, dude, that's he's it's uh, he's a Targaryen. He's not going to die. He's the whole day. Oh, and he's dead. So, yeah, wild. Which is good and bad. But I did like how like the whole thing was his mind is so important. We need him to save everything. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I like that the MacGuffin, because oftentimes a MacGuffin is like the object everyone's after, right? The thing like in the ring in Lord of the Rings is the thing everyone's after. I like that it was a head. So it was a person. I don't know. It was just kind of fun. It was different. It went from being a person to being a head <laughs> is what I'm trying to say. It's It was unusual. Yeah, the other, really, go ahead. I was going to say it's really well done. It's, 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 they, they got a, they got you to believe that it's, will work just fine without it needing to be the whole like, okay, show's over. I agree. The other big subversion of expectations for me was when she's like in the, uh, she's in the vault and they're going to kill her. And homeboy gets like the vault core and his suit. And he's just zooming in to do it. And they're like death by exile. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then they let her go. Yeah. <laughs> and, and he comes in and starts like kicking people around and stuff. Um, Thaddeus no no, not Thaddeus Maximus does this and I, it was such a great subversion of expectations for me because I totally thought that like these are evil vault dwellers they're gonna try and kill her he's gonna have to come in and save her it's gonna be awesome and cliche and all that and it it totally pivoted and I thought it was hilarious because he they had plenty of cool suit scenes we didn't need another one but yeah. we didn't have nearly enough funny scenes like that was so funny and that's what it worked too is because I did have they gave you enough of everything to please. I, I hope to please the fan. Um, we're the first ones to be bitter and complain. We get, we've gotten that the past, what, four years that we're the Debbie downers. But I always tell people just enjoy the move, the moment in the movie and the show. Right. So it was e- easy to enjoy that. They did bring, Oh, that suit is really cool. I was wondering people in the brotherhood are D bags and they beat up on each other. Right. Yeah. It is good to put my kind of theories or it makes sense. They're like, Oh, the, I was forgetting, not savages. What are they called? The the raiders. Raiders are going to be a little bit selfish and have no um, morals. They're, that's who they are, right? Uh, so I like that a lot. Yeah, I agree. I thought the humor was really good. I can think of a few jokes just off the top of my head where I was I was laughing pretty hard. Like she finds that guy who's dumping sand into like a water purifier, and she's like, "Have you tried putting water in it?" He's like. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> and then he asks her to marry him. <laughs> I'm going to be dead soon. You won't have to put up with me long. <laughs> that would be me. I <laughs> sent a photo of that guy to my younger brother. And I was like, this would be me during a zombie apocalypse. <laughs> Just in his underwear. It was like a diaper. It wasn't even underwear. <laughs> He's uh, just walking around. Yeah, it's, it's hard. He was like, all this can be yours. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Real quick favorite robot of all Matthew Barry's robot or like K2SO on Rogue One dude how did you know I was going to say K2SO how because did you know the John? best robot I've ever met in humor because he kept talking about humor it's true it's, K2SO I've, I've been wanting one to beat him but his sarcasm is I tell everyone if you haven't watched Rogue One watch it and you'll fall in love with that droid I think Matthew Barry could compete if we had more time with him but he's pretty quick Okay. He was great in the scenes he was in, but like K2SO was so funny and good. And it's basically yeah, if, just if, Eric if, to me. If Matthew Barry's robot was like your companion you could have in the game, you got yeah. a follower, a follower you can have. Yes. Then they can have like situations. He'll be like, oh, I don't like that, my darling. <laughs> yes. I harvest their organs. Yes, exactly. I So K2SO always reminds me of Eric, our dungeon master, for whatever reason, just kind of the humor and... Like the thoughtful, like, are you kidding me? <laughs> like the side eye and all that. It's like, that's Eric. 
But I told that to Eric once, and I don't think he liked it. I was like, how did you not like it? He's like the really? best robot ever. Yeah, and he's a robot. You're robotic. I didn't say you were C-3PO. Come on, uh, man. Yeah, I didn't say you are some whiny little... I'm going this way. Wow, that was oh. high-pitched. I'm sorry, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm... Yeah. So, Fallout for me, I'm going to give it a 9.2. Wow. wow, I gave it a 7. You're a 7, Johnny? Yeah. I, I Halo was my favorite over it. You haven't seen Halo yet. <laughs> Halo captivated me more than Fallout, but I really liked it. Johnny, I when you say things like this to me, it makes me want to pinch you <laughs> in the eye. I would not give it a nine. That's the highest rating you've given something in like three years. So, all right. So just for those who are wondering, Avatar The Last Airbender would be like a nine, seven. The cartoon or Nine, the eight. live action? The cartoon. The live action wasn't bad. It was bad. The dialogue was horrible. No, no, no. The TV show, the new one. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. It was bad. It's not as bad as the movie. Okay, Johnny, it's hard to fall from the floor. <laughs> Gosh, you're talking about one of the worst movies of all time. And compare compare the Avatar The Last Airbender, that adaptation to, to One Piece. Like... Okay, though you can't bring up One Piece in that because One Piece was just a magical. <laughs> I would say One Piece would tie it. So they're both at like 9-2 for me. One Piece okay. and um, Fallout. Fallout will for sure be my favorite show of this year. Um, and it won't be close. I just, there's something about it, Johnny, where I just got hooked and I didn't have a single episode I didn't enjoy. I wanted to watch the next episode. I liked the world. I thought it was funny. I thought it was endearing. I liked her. I liked Maximus. It is true. And and, and and I will say this too. It's good to have a protagonist that we don't need to debate her gender, that, that it matters. She was just owning it, just running around. I like that a lot. Right. She was that... just, she was just uh, in charge and learning the world. And then no one was complaining like, it should have been. Or they're just going for it. I like that there was never a moment where like, I am a girl, but I'm still going to beat you up. Yeah. It was like the issue with her was that she was a vault dweller. It was never yeah, that she was naive, a girl. Naivety, which would have been anybody. Yeah. I, I really liked that too. Cause like guys, it's a trope now we've done it so much. You don't need to point out the fact that you're a girl and you're beating people up. Like it's awesome. We get it. Go for we it. don't. Yeah. But this soapbox moments that, that pull, that is suddenly a social commentary that pulls me out of the show. Yeah, Johnny, you're 100 percent right. I love well, that. Like Wonder Woman, when does Wonder Woman ever stop and be like, "Ah, oh, I'm a woman"? No, it just, it just beats up on people and keeps going. Yeah, there was a moment in the in the Wonder Woman film where I was really scared they were going to do that. Where Chris Pine goes, "It's no man's land," which means no man can cross it. Mm -hmm. And I was so scared she was going to say, well, I'm, "I'm not a man." Yeah, I was going to be like, "Oh my gosh!" But instead, she says, "Well, it's what I'm going to do," and I'm like, yeah. "Thank you." Because I do not need this social commentary about how blah, 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 even so there's a there's a famous quote by Roger Ebert, and it says, I care a lot less about what you say and a lot more about how you say it, which basically just means like, if you can say things in a productive and well thought out and amazing, like entertaining way, that's awesome. But if it's just this, I'm going to hit you over the head with a metaphor, even if I agree with the metaphor, or even if I agree with the message, it's stupid at that point, because you're hitting me over the head with it. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, so anyway, it was well done. That's what I'm saying. It was well done. Yeah. Uh, Master uh, Halo was the same thing too. The other elite, the other um, Spartans, the female ones were baddies. They didn't say anything about gender. They were just we're 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 above uh, the Spartans below us, the Marines. I, right? I agree. Can we grow up? Like, can we just be adults? <laughs> I love it, yeah, Johnny. Just, just keep going. Oh, you are so smart. You are so I effing you know, you know, smart. I watched it because I thought Lucy was pretty cool, man. I'll keep, I'll get. Mm. I'll buy her. If our if our buddy Aaron um makes uh if he has artwork on Fallout Four during Fan X, you know you know oh. we're gonna buy it. Oh dude, yeah, I'm buying so much. Fallout Four. I, I, I remember so. telling you before when we went, I was like, if Aaron has uh, Lambert, he's one of our favorite artists. I have two of his stuff. I think Jay has two of his stuff. Every year we have to go. We have to support him. Uh, I said if he has Michael Keaton Batman, I'm gonna buy it. And you go, boom, there it is, and I bought it. Yeah, we always uh, buy. I think we each have four now because I think we buy two every year. Yeah, I try to get a lot of his prints um, and I make him double sign it, which he, he always has to sign it with a different pen. I'm like, no, sign it again. I know. <laughs> it's and signed. I never want sign it. it but then I feel like I have to because you did it. <laughs> He's like, do you I'll, want yours signed too? And I'm like, and then I get it. 
Yeah, sign I know. I like the double two. sign. And I was like, <laughs> sign it again. <laughs> sign it again. Yeah, but that is something I do want to look forward to because the one the one piece artwork we got, um, where it was the Japanese style with the the man. I have it here. Yeah, it's hanging in my wall. One of the biggest pieces that I've gotten the most compliments for has been that one. Uh, so I'm super stoked to see the new, um, if any Fallout stuff comes out, because Fallout was really big this year. Halo was big. A lot of video games are big. So Yeah, it's back there behind the bookshelf. But yeah, it's, it's so that's something that we really want to make sure is there. So I wonder if we can DM them. We'll probably DM them to make it. We should it probably fun. ask, like, are you, you, you're going to do Fallout, right? You're going to have a and Fallout. If you don't, here's what I want. I will pay you a lot, a lot of your standard do, 25 bucks. Do you think he'll do one of, like, the Brotherhood, like, walking dudes? Or do you I think he'll do her, to have Lucy? Lucy? Just turning her back on everybody and walking away. Like, Lucy's I, so cool with those yeah, big I, eyes. And yeah, I just well, love I just that like, she's so nice. Yeah. But at the same time, she adapted really quickly, though. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think anything with the vault, I like the vault dweller wearing the vault, whatever number they're on the all blue suit and just like kind of it tattered a little bit. Yeah, that'd be legit. Johnny, 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 Johnny. That's right. I think we missed one show that you watched that I didn't. Shogun. I haven't finished it yet, so we should save it to when I finish it. Cause we've, okay. we've talked so much on fallout and, uh, fallout to me. Halo and Halo, but that's where it is, Knights. Um, we recommend both. If you've seen it, let us know what you like and don't like. I mean, I took a longer time to watch Fallout. Like, I, It's just me. So you don't feel like it's embarrassing to not love a show right away. And I actually got scared away from Halo because I watched the first few episodes where it's just like not about Master Chief. And I was just kind of like, I know. I tell so... everyone, season one, you can almost skip it. it does... I think you can. I think you can skip it a little bit, but you know what? It, it'll ca- You can catch up, dude. You could Not skip it. Big. I yeah. genuinely believe you could. Yeah. Season two made it seem like one didn't exist. So that's what you want. Okay. I will watch it. I will. I'm committing now, Johnny, to watch okay. season two. And I'm committing for you to tell me about Shogun. Cause there's a lot of reading. I don't want to read. No, what you're committing to Johnny is to eventually voice a robot for me. That's merely going to harvest. <laughs> I do a really crappy Matthew Berry, my darling. <laughs> but I want this floating robot that just hangs out with me and spouts Johnny. I don't want Matthew Berry voicing it. I want Johnny I'll pretending be like... to be Matthew Berry. <laughs> and just saying, my darling. <laughs> like hours. Yes. And then not being to distinguish uh, generic European dark hair girls. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they all look the same. To... I can't tell who's talking. <laughs> what about Nandor? <laughs> <laughs> Okay. All right. On that horrible note, we're going to go ahead and end this cast. Knights, what did you think of Fallout? What did you think of Halo? Uh, are you distraught that they took off the mask in Fallout? I mean, in Halo. Uh, are you are you distraught he took off his helmet? Let us know in the comments below, and we will catch you on the flippity flop. Flippity flip.